Have you seen this graph before? It's our excitement levels during a project. And this, I call that the ugly phase. Today, we're gonna talk about that and four tips on how to get through it. Hi, I'm the Maker Monster and this is the Maker Monster Show, where we make whatever we want and explore ideas that can help us bring our imaginations to life. Every single project I've ever done has gone through the ugly phase. Somehow, every time, it's harder and more work than we expect it to be. And that's when it starts to fall into the ugly phase. When we get to that point where it's just not measuring up to anything close to that amazing idea we had in our head. When everything we do just brings it further and further away from that original idea. To that point where just nothing seems to be working. When it feels like there's just not even a point to keep going. I started calling it the ugly phase when I was a sculptor. I'd start off with a small lump of clay and I'd start quickly roughing it into the shape of a face and some features. There was movement. I could see a character coming out of this wet chunk of clay. It would look so full of life at that point. But pretty much without fail, when it came time to start refining the shapes and making it more detailed, it would dive deep into the ugly face. Every bit of clay I added took it further and further away from the image I had in my head. There have been way more than a few faces that were punched back into a lump of clay at this point. The ugly phase is going to be when we want to quit the most. The tricky part about the ugly phase is that it's not just the current project that we have to worry about. It's the larger project, the project that this project is a part of. Because every project is part of something bigger. Every project is a part of building the lives that we want to live. Making a single video is part of building a YouTube channel. Doing a drawing a day is part of building a drawing habit. Every project is a part of a bigger project behind it. And it's the ugly phase of those bigger projects that can be really dangerous. That's when we're gonna be the most likely to quit because it won't really feel like quitting. I stopped making videos for a while and I didn't feel like I was quitting. I was just taking a break. I was figuring stuff out. But when does taking a break turn into quitting? If I never made another video, to everyone else it would just look like I quit. Sometimes on these big projects, it doesn't feel like we're giving up. It's when we believe that thought of, I'll do that tomorrow. It's when we're deep in the ugly phase of these bigger projects that that feeling of, what's the point, has the most impact. Those are the ugly phases that we have to look out for because that's when it's gonna be hardest to keep going. So how do we? How do we push forward through these low points when it feels like it's going nowhere? Because that's the trick. Finding ways to push through the ugly phase so that we can get to the place where it stops being an idea and become something real. You know that book, Steal Like an Artist by Austin Kleon? He also wrote a book called Keep Going that talks about this exact thing. And these are four of my favorite tips from that book. Tip number one, every day is Groundhog Day. Okay, I'll be honest with you, I've never actually seen Groundhog Day, but I think I get the plot well enough. Guy ends up living the same day over and over and over again, right? That sounds miserable. But I think eventually doing the same thing over and over again every day, we can find a kind of freedom in it. What he says in the book is, Rather than restricting your freedom, a routine gives you freedom by protecting you from the ups and downs of life and helping you take advantage of your limited time, energy, and talent. A routine establishes good habits that can lead to your best work. If we know what to expect, then there's no reason to worry about what comes next. And it's the same with making stuff. There's that quote that I've always really liked that's something like, I only write when inspiration strikes. Luckily, it strikes at the same time every day. If we wait for inspiration to strike before we get to work, who knows how long we're going to be waiting. I mean, sometimes I'll show up to the monster shop and I'll do absolutely nothing. But just being here makes it way more likely that I'll get to work on something than if we we're back home on the couch. If we show up at the same time every day, eventually we're going to get to work, no matter how stuck we are. It'll turn into what we do instead of just what we want to do. Tip number two, when in doubt, tidy up. This tip is especially helpful for those of us who tend to be a little bit messy. The point he makes in the book is that as you clean up a messy space, we have a chance to come across connections that we might not have made otherwise. Random things coming together in a way that we wouldn't have thought about before. I mean, I've definitely had times where I was cleaning up and found things I'd completely forgotten that I had. But there's another way I like to think about cleaning. Sometimes I'll purposefully leave the monster shop a mess when I'm done for the day. It's a bit like the issue of a painter starting with a blank canvas or a writer with a blank page. If I show up to the monster shop and everything's already clean and ready to go, sometimes I'm not sure what to start with. What do I do first? But if I left it a mess, I know exactly what I've got to do. I've got to clean up. 
And so the cleaning instantly gets me into motion. There's no debating on what to start. I just start cleaning. And then once that inertia is built up, it's easier to keep going. Tip number three, demons hate fresh air. Take a break, go for a walk, or even just take a nap. Put some space between ourselves and what we're working on. Pretty much any time I'm stuck on something, I'll go, eh, I'll come back tomorrow. Sure, sometimes it's a procrastination thing, a little bit of worrying about whether I'm going to screw it up or not, but most of the time, it's knowing that when I come back, I'll see something new. I'll see something I just hadn't seen before. And so if you've been working on something hard and you're totally stuck, take a break. Our minds will keep playing around with the idea as we distract it with other things. Some of my best ideas come to me when I'm in the shower. I don't know how many times I've rushed out of the bathroom to write down an idea before I forget it. So go for a walk, get some exercise, or just take a nap. Chances are you'll come back and you'll see something new, something you hadn't seen before. Tip number four, forget the noun, do the verb. This might be the best one. It's definitely my favorite. Forget the noun, do the verb. Sometimes it's so easy to get wrapped up in the identity of what we're doing. It stops being something we're doing because it's fun and starts being something we're doing because that's who we are. I'm an artist. I'm a maker. I'm a creative. Gross. Don't, don't call yourself a creative. But if we're too identified with being the noun, it can put so much pressure on ourselves to live up to that. What if we forget about the noun and just do the verb instead? Then we're just making things, we're building, we're creating. It brings us back to doing things just for the fun of it, making things just for the pure enjoyment of making. Sometimes I'll purposefully make something silly and just not film it, not share any pictures of it, just to keep it from becoming this thing that I have to do, something that I'm doing for other people to keep it something I'm doing for fun for myself. We're gonna have to push through the ugly face to get anywhere close to the potential of our ideas. But once we do, it'll turn them into something way better than potential. They'll become something real. But sometimes we get stuck because we're a little too worried about what other people will think. If that's an issue, check out this video right here. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. Bye.